Hey guys, welcome back to Contest Prep University. I'm Joe Klimczewski with Adam Atkinson, still in our Bro Myth series, and we've got one on flying. I remember we touched on this uh, a couple months ago, Adam, just describing the peaking process, but I I've heard this before too, and I know you have, that people who fly, you get up to 30, 40,000 feet, all of a sudden you're gonna be retaining water like crazy, so you can't fly before the show, maybe you gotta do something else. What are the, what are the things that people are being told? Yeah, a lot of it comes down to the being bloated after the flight. Um, you know, I do have clients and even myself, I don't fly very well. I get a little nauseous. So with somebody like me, I literally probably do want to fly a day before a show just so I have a day to kind of relax and just feel a little more normal and then carry on. But, you know, there's just this myth where if you fly the cabin – pressure is going to bloat you, which cabin pressure is made so it feels just like we're here right now. So there's really no physiological change that should happen, just aside from the fact that you're inactive. And I see it all the time where coaches nearly blame the flight for their really their spillover with a, you know, maybe thousand gram of carb refeed they gave them the day that they flew. So no wonder they wake up filming on Friday or Saturday, the day after the flight. Right. I remember in our peak week series, we discussed that. And, and that's the only place I could nail down that myth as well is obviously most people are going to be flying on Thursday or Friday, maybe Wednesday. So the traditional conventional peaking is of course to be very depleted going into that Wednesday, Thursday time. And as you said, then you've got this massive, massive rapid backload. And uh, so voila, you're going to spill over. You're going to have all of this edema, especially because now you're coupling it with just sitting still. You, you gave all of the points perfectly, Adam. So uh, flying, I, I would say, has nothing to do with spilling over being softer. But I will say, as you mentioned, just because of that inactivity, even in a car, if somebody's going to drive six hours or fly eight hours, whatever the case, I will always tell a client, once you arrive and you settle in, you know, that, that's a good time to just go for a walk. If we've got any training or cardio scheduled, I would rather you do that later in the afternoon or evening after a day of travel than trying to rush to the gym or do some cardio at three in the morning before a flight just to, quote, get it in because your coach told you to. So for that reason of inactivity and immobility, I think that's a good time just to you know, drink a bunch of water, you know, go move, do something, and you're probably going to feel a lot better on many levels. Multiple times I see clients look better after that activity after a flight. So I can see why people maybe think that. And uh, really just being active, sweating a bit, and getting your temperature up is a great recipe to mitigate that. Yeah, but definitely, as you said, not the cabin pressure, since cabin pressure is the same. Being at 30, 40,000 feet doesn't do anything. But, you know, interestingly, uh, when you are that high, you are closer to the sun, and there's a lot of cosmic radiation. Uh, not, not to create another myth. I don't want people to all of a sudden start take you know, massive antioxidants. But right. you know, for, for people who fly for a living or a lot, uh, pilots, that kind of thing, that's, that's an actual health concern. But Again, for a short flight uh, or once in a while flight for a contest, it's going to have no bearing. But, but definitely, as Adam and I said, you know, get out there and do some activity afterwards, some cardio, some training, drink some water and all that good stuff. So, all right, Adam, I don't know how many more of these myths we have, but uh, we'll, we'll go as long as they are. This is going to be the end of this particular chapter in the series. But as I said, I know as things come up, and questions we get from you guys, you know, please keep jotting down questions. I've heard a lot uh, of, of great comments from you guys watching and listening. So give us some questions and we will direct our content in that direction. But as always, Adam, thank you. And thank, thank you guys for watching and listening.